paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. It's December 2nd, unless I have messed up my podcast specials or uh, my podcast schedule somehow. And today, uh, just one of the nicest uh, people. Oh, first, let me do an ad. Hey, the Patreon is rocking and rolling with uh, tarot or extra episodes of Paranormal Karen uh, that you get two more a month. Some of them are like 20 to 40 minutes long. They're just me on the first one. And the second one is what's going on in Utica, true crime, hauntings, everything. So please join the Patreon. I'm trying to really blow that up. And um uh, and that's it for now. I will see you next week, the 10th and 11th at Wisecrackers in Pennsylvania. All right, let's jump right in. So a lot of people, when they tell me they're trying to serve others, I don't really believe them. This lady, I believe the proof is in the pudding. I don't know. Do you eat sugar, Sal? Do I eat sugar? Yes. Well, yeah, I, I like cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The proof is in the cake. Um, Salo Stanley is here with me today. And uh, I have I have you here for two reasons, my friend. Um, one, because you're a great guest. And two, because your originating story, I think so many people need to hear and understand. And I feel like it's something that is happening more now, but you're going to be the expert on that. So how are you, my friend? Is it getting cold where you are? Yes, it is. I'm in Springfield, Illinois, and I just moved here about three years ago from California, sunny California. So I got four seasons here. And yeah, it's, it's start. We had our first frost this morning. and But I don't mind. People say you won't like the snow, but I'm really enjoying the four seasons because my guides always say, you know, it's important to experience the four seasons because it's part of our body, too. And, and you know, health care, you know, the, the winter, the summer, the spring and, and the fall really pertains to our whole life in a way and also our body, mind and spirit. So I, I'm really enjoying it. OK, so I am going to write that on my wall as a former California girl that was a little bit forced into moving into the four seasons. But I love that. And I never thought of that, that our body actually uh, is made for the four seasons. That's pretty yeah, good. It is. Yeah, for the circadian rhythm and um, and also the daylight, you know, getting darker and lighter. It affects our pineal gland and our vision, our inner vision. And, you know, you got to take the, that winter time of quiet introspection in order to recalibrate your body, to let those cells regenerate, to have that little downtime mm-hmm. in order to, to reflect. And then when the spring comes in, we get those ideas. We can do our business even better, uh, our relationships with one another. So there really is this wonderful rhythm down here on planet Earth that is so important to experience. You know, I just, uh, so I wanted to start with your originating story, but we might be getting into your dream stuff first because it's funny that you say that because um, I am sleeping. Well, I think there's two things going on. I think it's the winter, but also it might be a 2022 thing. You are such an upbeat person. I am very suspicious person, very suspicious of 2022 and can't wait to, it's a tough year, (laughs) but um, even when I go to my exercise class right now, it's either zero sleep or the deepest sleep ever with uh, dreams remembering like never before. Have you found any change in in sort of how you're sleeping right now well yes well especially coming to springfield illinois uh from being in california all my life and like a sixth generation california coming to the midwest was just totally different and so i i slept about 12 to 14 hours the first time i got here in springfield because it's a totally different ley line you know especially if you anyone that does astrology or astrocartology knows that you're going to be a little different with your body mind and spirit in different points of the planet and so i i did sleep a lot and one thing that my guides always said was around 2017 um i was also going through uh some you know spiritual changes happening around that time and my guides came in and said you know from 2017 to 2025 are going to be very stressful years for around the planet Mm. i never knew what that was and of course i knew the astrology and then they said of course 2020 would be something that 
all the astrologers were looking at with all the planetary yep. alignments, but never could figure out what that was until it came. <laughs> and so uh, it's a it's a major reboot that we're having right now on, on the planet in 2022 is very stressful. And we're going to start coming out of it, um, starting to see a little ray of hope and light. Uh, March of 2023, because there is uh, a changeover of Pluto, Ben, and Capricorn um, for the last 14 years, and it's going to be changing over into Aquarius, and so uh, more of a general with electronics and getting along with one another, having our own pods and neighborhoods, um, the people that really resonate for us, um, doing things more locally, uh, governments breaking down into, uh, you know, what some of the suppression has been over the years mm. into something totally new. So I always tell people, you know, just buckle your seatbelts. You know, we're still got a cuppy, couple bumpy rides, you know, until 2025. We're going to start seeing the light a little bit more in 2025. And there'll still be crucial years for the advance of, you know, art and music and dance and community coming up for 2025 to 2030. And, you know, can we hold that vision? Um, I think we can. I, I think there's enough of us now that are more awakening. And, and of course, you probably know this, your podcast of people saying, you know, uh, 2020 came and, and, and some of the challenges we had, it was just a, a great, um, way of the universe saying, well, young lady, you need to go room to your room and think of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not only do I love that, I am going to listen to this like 10 times because I am a little, I am worried people are not waking up, but, and thank God, I, I think I heard a collective sigh from everyone that listens to my podcast when you said March of 2023, because I kill, I still feel like if we can get past November, it won't be as bad. I'm hoping, but that ray of hope for March sounds fantastic. Um, and also, uh, I love that you said, because here's the thing. I do think we're getting a new government and I do think everything is breaking down and that freaks people out. Like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Because that's what the old government wants us to think. But actually, we're probably going to be fine, aren't we? I I definitely feel that. You know, my guides have always said, you know, we all have a boat in the universe, you know, um, and so you just have remember that you can vote whatever you were your reality wants to be this is a great holographic experience you know um and um i'm just always been through trials and tribulations of course but i always do my best to to think of how i want to write my life and how i would like the planet to look and um and from my experience of um 1992 um you know having a spiritual awakening up in the crystal healing table in Fresno, California, um, being a chiropractor there and working on my patients and being brought up Catholic and, and then all of a sudden have my whole life change in one moment, um, really, uh, made me know that we can create our reality. And there is a, a, a bigger vision and a bigger, uh, world out there past our world, past our contact with other, um, civilizations that are there that really want to help, but we have to ask for it um, because it's not about enabling. It's about self-empowering one another. Uh, okay. And so much folks, it, it just, I can't wait to tell what she's talking about in 1992, which some of you may have heard, although it's been a while and I have a new uh, listeners. So everybody hold on. Cause it's so important. Um, but before we do, so we were talking earlier and you said, usually you have dreams before you do a reading or a thing. And you had a dream last night and it was so, you just gave me like the byline, like the TV guideline. And I was like, okay, say that on the podcast, whatever it is. Um, Maybe it means yeah. something to me or somebody. What did you dream about last night? Well, I, I dream about um, ancient Mes Mesopotamia and Babylonian um, um, art relief that's on the wall. Uh, they used to uh, use like clay and relief and paintings, almost like Egyptian sculptures, um, like from Sumeria. Wow. and Babylonian. And I think, you know, part of the, the world really does evolve um, on an ancient site in Iran um, because a lot of uh, original stories are from, from that era. And 
And so I, I dream about going in these little, uh, you know, giant rooms. It was kind of like a museum where they exist, but it was like I was in a different reality. So the best way I can explain it is, um, you know how you can be in a room and yet you can feel ghosts sometimes if you ever do any ghost hunting because mm-hmm. they're just in a different dimension, but you can't see them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I felt like in the dream, I was the ghost being in another dimension and I could feel the presence of other people in the museum walking around there. But in my dream time, I was transported to this area and experiencing it on a quiet level, but still with the awareness of the people in the museum. And so uh, as I'm talking right now, it's just off the cuff. I'm thinking that we're probably going back to the roots of our contact with um, ancient civilizations, the knowledge that was there that was never taught in school, um, and also our contact with other beings, be it in the etheric realms, and that we are also becoming more multidimensional, which you probably have a lot of guests on there talking about 4D and 5D consciousness that we're going into. Um, You know, I do, but feel free. No, actually, I don't have that many hitting on that. Feel free to expand. Have at it. Well, uh, the the veils are lowering more now because of the solar flares and also the Schumann resonance um, is changing on the planet, um, which is usually 7.8 hertz. There's a certain vibration or musical note in a way that's around the stratosphere of planet Earth. And it's called Schumann's resonance. And our heart beats to that. Our our rhythms of our body beats to it. And it is an in a sense of uh, what they call um, an alpha state. Our brain waves around 14 hertz and above um, are usually in an awake state, which is beta. And um, we, we have a conversation and stuff. But right before we go to sleep, right before meditation, uh, we get in a deep sleep, or before we go into um, going off to uh, sleep for the night, we, our brain waves start to shift down gears into alpha waves. And that is Schumann's resonance, which is 7.8 hertz. Well, um, we've been seeing a lot of spikes over the last years uh, about it increasing all the way up to 14 and 50 hertz. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, you know, whiting out. And you can get this <laughs> on the NASA website. So it's not like woo-woo stuff. I mean, this is really actual no, scientific stuff right. that's happening. They can't explain. And so, uh, you know, and they also find that psychics and mediums start to go into alpha wave. And also, when you go into deep dream state at nighttime or REM sleep, you go into delta and theta waves. And they find when they hook electrodes up to uh, psychics and mediums that they are actually reading for people in the delta and, you know, uh, frequency. (laughs) And they're like, and they're awake. So it's like part of their brain shuts off and another part turns on. And so it's just really amazing. So I really find that with these changes of that frequency happening is breaking the wall and barriers of the other dimensions being in fourth density. It's a different uh, musical note. And then fifth density is a higher vibration or musical note that a lot of ET cultures around uh, the Milky Way galaxy and also outside of the Milky Way galaxy is starting to blend in. So more people are seeing ghosts, more people are having contact with UFOs, they're seeing bright lights, they're seeing orbs. And um, because their brain waves are actually changing and their DNA is actually changing through the frequencies that are being emitted here on this planet Earth. And it's a real exciting time because uh, we have never seen this precipice ever happen in this part of the galaxy before of this spiritual awakening. Yeah. And yes, there are some negative things happening and we are seeing and experiencing and war. And, you know, this is really a murky place, you know, but, you know, coming here, the only the bravest of the brave souls get reincarnated and come here to have this wonderful experience, no matter how it looks. And even though we can have these negative occurrences about things, it's a great gift because it shows us what we want and what we don't want. Mm -hmm. and it's so important to have that experience of of the sense of our shadow self our darkness yes i do my best about coming across as a positive person but i also embrace the shadow part of ourselves and those really low points that we have because it's such a big learning experience 
Um, for us. So. Yes. So uh, I, I have two questions uh, uh, just back because you're, everything you're saying is so right on. So were you saying it's the Schumann residents and maybe a lot of people going into Delta State that's kind of making it so that the paranormal is way more normal? Is that kind of what you were yeah. saying? Oh, yes, and- I think that our, our activation of our pineal also gland is happening with these increased frequencies um, and it is activating it. Our pineal gland is um, controlled by light and sunlight. And so, of course, a, a lot of times it says, don't be out in the sun. You're going to get sin- skin cancer. Don't sun gaze. But, you know, the sun is very healthy. It has vitamin D for our skin, especially morning at 10 o'clock. But then it activates that DMT in our brain, our psychic centers. And the pineal gland actually has rods and cones in it, just like the vision of our eye. That's why they call it our third eye. Uh And so this chemical reaction, it also is, it floats in a water-like substance with um, crystals also. So the light activates the DMT and the crystals in the center of our pineal gland, and it can create a spiritual awakening. So when I had my spiritual awakening in 1992 as a walk-in, I physically heard a pop in the center of my brain that was actually activating my pineal gland. Um, And I think that is really happening across the planet right now with people activating that spiritual um, you know, muscle and um, really having more deep dreams going back to um, that phase that we were talking about dream time and star seeds also that were born off of other planets that come to reincarnate that now at age 27 to 36 or whatever are beginning to spiritually awaken to yes. create this change here on the planet. Um, okay. So, you know, it's so funny. I have um, so I'm going to go off the top and everyone please laugh at my little conspiracy theory, but for years, and I, I, I mean, I, I don't know what they've been planning for years. And I always say they, whatever the, they, the people, the government, the, whoever's running the government, whatever. I'm sorry, people, I'm not going to get into that. But I, if you've noticed, uh, they always wanted us to wear sunblock and I always did wear sunblock only on my face. I didn't wear it on my body, but also now they're saying, Oh, the sunblock we told you to wear causes cancer. You got to wear this one. And then I thought you, we all know the biggest problem with COVID was people didn't have enough vitamin D. So I'm like, okay, there's a, there's too many things connecting lines there, but that's for another, when I have someone conspiracy theorist on, um, and, and so when we come back, we're going to get into your 1992 um, experience, which, folks, it's unlike any other. I can't wait to talk about it. Um, the pineal gland, is it that um, you want it to be like sand or you want it to be like liquid? Doesn't it change the more sort of psychic stuff you do or does it stay the same? Uh, well, it is really open from age zero to nine. And it floats around, but then due to fluoride and fluoride in the water, it creates calcification. So by the time you become a teenager, it, the pineal gland can become calcified. However, with certain sound and frequency waves, and, and for years I used to use tuning forks, so you place tuning forks on either side of the brain on your temples, that will start to break away some of that calcium deposits and help spiritually awaken you too. Wow. Do you um, need special notes or just tuning forks? Um, just tuning forks. I like I like it in the key of C sharp because that is the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Note of our galaxy here is C sharp, <laughs> which is one thirty six point one zero hertz. And because I'm also um, uh, a trained chiropractor for thirty three years, so I do know the human body. So a lot of the science I have is because of my education and knowledge of the body too. So it's not just woo woo. Um, I try to blend both worlds between the science and also the spirituality. Awesome. And before we go, folks, I just ordered my, um, I believe it's Dr. Schmidt's No Fluoride Natural Toothpaste. And then I, I don't know why these names are kind of the same. Schmidt's Deodorant, no, no Aluminum. And I have my Berkey with No Fluoride. And um, yes. And uh, so remember that about the fluoride, folks. But I do love that you can undo that um, with the notes. Uh, all right, folks, hold on. We'll be right back. Uh, this is a story you got to hear. Many people are unaware just how much hypnotherapy can help them or think it's only to help lose weight or quit smoking. But there is so much more hypnotherapy can do. It can help with stress. 
anxiety, insomnia, phobias, performance enhancement, connecting with your spirit guides and higher self. You can even discover past lives and your life between lives. Heal traumas, break habits, find your deepest truth, or just have fun discovering who you really are, all from the comfort of your home. I'm Monique Pliakis. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, and I want to help you. Schedule a free consult by going to www.innerstandingshypnosis.com. That's I-N-N-E-R-S-T-A-N-D-I-N-G-S-H-Y-P-N-O-S-I-S.com. Innerstandings Hypnosis. Find your power and ignite your inner light. Okay, okay Salo. So um, this, tell me everybody what happened in 1992 all right well i'm going to tell you about that but on that last note that we left off on i want to let you know what everybody's secret weapon is no matter what in the universe you always have your intuition no matter what you see what someone tells you what a guru does or even anything that i'm saying on this broadcast i come with solid <laughs> disclaimer you have your own intuition. Whatever resonates for you is your secret weapon to know which direction to go in life. So how cool is that? I yes. love it. <laughs> so, so yes, I, you know, in 1992, I had a, a client, one of my patients, chiropractic patients said, oh, I think you need to really see this really cool healer in town. She does crystal healings. And I said, oh my gosh, that sounds so woo woo. And I don't want to go and see her. But after six months of my patient, um, asking me to do it, I thought, well, I'll just go so this patient will stop asking me. And so I did. I went to go have a crystal healing in Fresno, California in 1992. In fact, it was um, July 28, 1992. I went to her office. I laid down on the table. Um, she started placing these crystals on my forehead. And, um, and then she started putting it on my chin and my throat chakra and my heart area and my chest. And right when she got to my chest area, I actually felt my body vibrating. It felt like as if I had, you know, like, if, you know, in those cheap motels, you put 25 cents in and the mm -hmm. bed vibrates. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you were too young for that, but they were very funny. <laughs> yeah. So, so it felt like that, like it was shaking, but my body was doing that. And all of a sudden, right when it was shaking, I actually heard a physical pop in my ears and in the center of my head. And all of a sudden I heard this voice come in and said, uh, oh my goodness, you know, and it was this voice from India in an Indian accent, and his name was Ishmet. He says, oh, hello, my name is Ishmet, and I've been with you ever since you were a little girl, and we're so happy to be here, and it totally freaked me out, because oh. I was like hearing this, and then all of a sudden, I visionally in my head saw what he looked like. He was wearing little diapers, and he's oh from my India. God. <laughs> and he had long black curly hair and like, oh my God, with the deepest blue eyes. I mean, with this great white smile. I just have and to say, this is so like spiritual, this is spiritual tech support, isn't it? That's what we can yes, call it when is. the voice comes in. Yes. Oh my God, it is. And so, uh, he was telling me, um, that, uh, he, he was explaining to me what was happening with the crystal healing, um, uh, and then all of a sudden, I started reading for the lady that was working on me. I was saying, oh, my goodness, you're having some trouble in your relationship. That's because it's from a past lifetime. This is what's going on. There's been a contract, blah, blah, blah. And I started reading for this lady. She stopped what she was doing and looked at me. Well, how, oh, my God, that's so true. How do you know that? And I said, well, I have this guy from India telling me right now. So I'm just repeating what he's saying. <laughs> and um, she says, oh, my gosh, I, I've never you know, experience. That. I says, well, I am neither. Isn't, is this part of the treatment? Is this what you do? <laughs> and, and the lady says, I've been doing, honey, I've been doing this for 20 years and this has never happened before. I love, my, I do love that your bravery to just like, just go, Hey, this is it. Like, and you did, you know what I mean? Like you weren't a woo woo person and you're just brave enough to no. say, Hey, this is it. No, it just felt so right in that moment with the, the vibration I was feeling. It just popped me into a different level that I did not experience here on planet Earth before ever in my whole life. In fact, um, you know, she said, um, she goes, well, I, this never happened to a client. It'll probably go away. Well, it never went away. And so when I left the office, I was seeing everybody's aura walking down the street. I was seeing squirrels auras. I was looking at the sky and I saw vibrations almost like when you look at a hot asphalt street on a 110 degree day 
everything was radiating energy. And the first place I went to uh, was called a metaphysical shop called the Brass Unicorn. And because Ishmael said, well, you need to go in here and buy an amethyst cathedral. It's really important. And so I did. I bought my first crystal there. And I brought it home and I went home to my boyfriend of 10 years, who was also a chiropractor. And we had a house together and a life. And I looked at him and I said, oh, my gosh, why am I with you? <laughs> you know? And I looked at him. And I said, would you mind if I left? And he says, no, he was reading the newspaper. You can leave anytime you want. I said, OK, great. So I remember um, getting on the phone with the broker on, and saying, I'd like to buy a new house. And he says, what? And I said, yeah. He goes, I go, I just feel it's time to move on. And I said, OK, so in a week I moved out. And my boyfriend looked at me. He says, oh, my God, you're really serious. I said, oh, no, don't take it personally. Um, this is just something I need to do. It has nothing to do with you. But I know I'm not supposed to be with you. And um, and, so, and and didn't you have a there was a name change or something also like you were a different person, right? Yes, I was a different person. And I found out later through people being sent to me, um, both um, people, Native American. I had Native American ceremonies. Um, I had, uh, been in Peru and they told me, uh, you know, I was a different being because, uh, one of my dad's friends, cause I called up my dad cause I was freaking out having this guy talk to me all the time. Ishmael. My dad didn't think I was crazy because my dad was kind of a hippie, you know? Uh -huh. And he said, oh, no, that sounds like this, this, and this. So he contacted me, one, one of his friends who worked at United Airlines, but was also a very uh, wonderful psychic. And he was my teacher for three years. And the first time he came to see me, he said, oh, my God, you're walking. And I said, what? I don't understand what a walk-in is. He goes, you aren't the same person. And then... I was like, I just kind of brushed it aside. But when I finally went to Peru, to Machu Picchu, one of the shaman there said, you know, I want to do a ceremony with me, with you, but you have to say your name three times so we can start the ceremony. And when I told them what my birth name was, they said, oh, that's not your name. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? And they said, no, that's not your name. And so they said, do you go by another name? And I said, yeah, that, that name I was given, um, on that day of 1992 was, was Salo. And I went, uh, Salo. And they said, Oh yeah, there you are. That's you. That's who you are. Wow. And when I went to also another native American, um, uh, uh, sweat lodge, um, they also asked me to say my name and they said, that's not your name. Wow. And, and one of the female medicine women said, she patted me on the head. It was really dark. And they were most of the other medicine men and women in there were all of the highest counsel. And yet Walking Bear said, I know you're a star being. I know you're not from here. And I think you need to come to this medicine, you know, sweat lodge and honor us. And I'm like, OK, because I'm just like, OK, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> And they all got mad at me. They said, you have no right being here. You have no right playing the Native American flute. You don't have no right with what we're doing. What makes you think you could be here? And I said, I says, I'm here because I was asked and I'm here because I remember. Wow. And the medicine woman said, grabbed my head and said, you need to respect this being because she is a star being, even though I didn't say I was a star being. She she goes, we revere, revere star beings and she has a message and she needs to be here. And by the end of that sweat lodge, people were very quiet. And after the fourth round, when we all went out, they all apologized to me. They were very, very kind. Wow. And that meant a lot to me. And so over the years, um, finally, I was told I was a walk-in, and then my Ishmet told me I was. When he told me I had such a bad headache, um, they said you need to go to Sedona to um, release whatever fragments are from the original occupant. So a walk-in is a person who actually makes a contract before the person is born. So the first person makes a contract to say, I'll do the first 36 years of life and get all the education and all the thing done. And then... Um, another uh, being, a star <laughs> being or an alien or whatever consciousness it is, can be inserted. The consciousness can be inserted in the body 
and take over the next part of the life. Okay, and I did I did the first 58. Who's coming in to relieve me? <laughs> I know. Really. And so, yeah, so it's a contract. And so uh, that's who I was. I was solo. Uh, and I came from two universes away. Um, I started having my memories come back and remember um, kind of like my crew and what I looked like and where I was from and what my mission was. And, um, and, and that became more clear in 1997. Um, after we started working with the shadow part, because I had to really clear up a lot of issues with the body and the original occupant and with the family and all sorts of things and create a healing of the ancestry um, and the pieces and learn to um, release um, any of the other pieces that she needed and then bring in um, my full totality of myself started happening in 1997. Okay. And I, and I did a little interruption there that I shouldn't have just the sort of 3d logistics really quick. Cause they're pretty phenomenal miracles is you left your boyfriend. You were like, I bought a house and he was like, what? And then, uh, just give everybody a real quick recap of your 3d world changing. Yeah. So, um, I went into, um, buying a house and then I didn't have any money. Because I didn't really have a concept of money, but luckily, you know, she was a chiropractor. So every time I went to go do her work, it's like I remembered. It's like almost like the the TV series Drop Dead Diva. You get these little downloads of memory and stuff, but you have a different personality. And even my sister noticed I was different. She says, you're not my sister. You know, she wow. says, you're, you're funny. You have a sense of humor and you're really positive, you know. <laughs> But uh, when I left my boyfriend, I just went to, um, when I bought the house, I didn't have any money. I had some money to put down, but I didn't have the money to, to, to close it. But my guide said, with such, if you ever entered a world where you just felt so self-assured where you came from, there's nothing that can deter that sense of positivity and that feeling. That's what I felt in that one moment. I did not worry. I knew the money was going to be there. There was no ifs, ands, and buts. So the day of closing my broker came with a check for $17,000 in my car to go in to sign the papers from my ex-boyfriend. Wow. And the thing is, my boyfriend said, I'm not giving you any money for the house, even though we bought it together. And I said, oh, that's okay. Ishmael told me not to worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and the broker said, well, your boyfriend went to, to a lawyer and they said, you guys live together. It's common law marriage. You better pay her for the part of the house because you're getting off easy. <gasps> and so I didn't know anything about those details. And he told me, so he told me to send you this check, this cashier's check for today's clothing. Oh. I mean, in that moment, I had so much self-assurance, so much knowledge. I didn't have no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And it manifested. It was amazing. But when I bought my new house, I didn't have any furniture in it because I really didn't know how to decorate it. I didn't know about pictures on the wall. Um, in fact, half the time when um, I moved into the house, I sold the original occupant's sports car. I got a new car. I got a truck. I got rid of all her clothes. In fact, half of my clothes, my boyfriend said, I'm so mad at you. I'm not giving you your clothes. And I said, that's okay. I don't want them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I just used to wear a t-shirt and jeans to work as whereas before she would wear Gucci shoes and um, suits and, you know, she had her hair really short. And like with me, I just let my hair grow out and I just wore, sh you know, a t-shirt and jeans to work and my, <laughs> you know, and I, and then when I had people visit, they had nowhere to sit. And then I realized, oh, well, this could be a problem. And they said, you know, you don't have a stick of furniture here. And, and I slept on the floor because I didn't know any better. So, um, my guide started having me watch HGTV. Um, so I, I can. Learn. <laughs> I love this so much. Is there, do you ever feel like there's, um, movies like, isn't there, there's a couple of movies like that. Like Kevin Spacey was in one and he came back in with the sunglasses. Did you ever see one where, or that movie, Michael, where, uh, John Travolta, do you ever see one that you go, ah, Oh, this is my experience. Oh yeah. A lot of them have a lot of similarities and even a lot of Star Trek, uh, shows do in fact the one where um, captain picard um becomes unconscious for for 20 minutes but he spends a whole lifetime on another planet i know and, um, i heard and, someone complain about they did a mushroom thing they did i can't remember they did mushrooms once and they were had a whole life where they uh had a family and kids this is actually quite 
common. I'm glad you kind of brought that up where someone will have this great life and it's completely different from theirs. And then they come back and wake up and it's not like a dream, but they're like, oh my God, I had a whole nother life. Like, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yes. That's exactly what it feels like to be a walk-in because I do have a conscious self, I'm a multidimensional reality, which goes into that 4D and 5D we caught. I do have an awareness of me being from my planet on a ship with my people, what I do, sitting there in a chair in a meditative state that it will only be like a few seconds to 20 minutes when this whole lifetime is over. So, But I have that awareness. I know myself there. I know myself as a higher self in a way. And I like to to say that everybody has that possibility. It's almost like their higher self is projecting the the information to you now, being an insert, because our body has a consciousness of itself. The body diva is like the horse. And the consciousness is your spirit or soul consciousness. And so it gets inserted in this wonderful vehicle. And for, for a walk-in, we just switch the different souls, vibrations, which is like a musical note, uh, different frequency. Um, she can go back to her home and and I'm still somewhere else that I have awareness injecting this personality, uh, consciousness, soul into this wonderful vehicle that I have to be able to be a service to others here, which is so cool. And hopefully through the clarity of my example, um, maybe something will rub off on someone and inspire someone because I feel that's my biggest mission down here is inspiration. Well, on this podcast, you already have, I'm sure, including me. Um, and because I'm paranormal, Karen, and I always go a little to the shadow, um, sometimes in, um, I don't think it's that possible when we're doing investigating, uh, we will have something of a walk-in where some spirit will try to get in and sometimes somewhat successful jump into somebody else's body, but they can't sustain it. Is that just because they're not supposed to be there? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. You know, I think that a lot of times here that we really have contracts with everybody that even though something may seem kind of bad or like they're trying to take over the body, Mm -hmm. I think there's probably some higher level contract about the interaction with some of the ghosts or spirits. And it's a way that they can actually, I I think that the ghosts and spirits have different um, capabilities of gifts. Um, And, and for what me being a walk-in knowing about ghosts and um, other things um, along that, because I use the ghost box a lot to talk with my guides and angels and uh-huh. actually had the voices come through. Mm. And I mean, people use it for ghosts, but it's like, you know, I go people out there, you could be talking to your guides and angels and getting a lot of guidance. It's like, really I cool. love that. Uh, set the intention on the ghost box. You only want to talk to your guides and angels and put it out there. I love it. Right. And so um, a lot of that will happen because they may not be able to sustain the frequency or the nervous system is different because as my walking experience, this body went through um, trying to fit like a 747 in a little Cessna, the energy. Mm-hmm. And so the nervous system went through a lot of changes and some illnesses and some, you know, weird stuff. But it, it, it has to you have to start raising the frequency in order to get there. And so the ghost may be from a different dimension and the consciousness of the person's body and beliefs may be different. And so um, it's really kind of hard to keep a frequency in someone else's body as a ghost. If they got the talent, sometimes they can go longer because they may have some mediumship capabilities that they had when they were living that they can um, take over to the other side. And I found that talking with ghosts and also, um, and, and, and that's the thing about it. I, I would say the most majority of ghosts are really misunderstood or what people yeah. in the paranormal think about the ghosts. Um, because whatever your reality is, that's what you're going to draw in. Right. I mean, be it the demon ghosts or people lost or whatever is like, who, you know, how arrogant would it be for me to say, you need to go to light, you know, and, and maybe they're having an experience like I am and I'm a ghost to someone else in the lower dimension, you know, and they're telling me to go to light. No, I'm having my experience, you know? Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Um, you know what else I think too, especially when, we feel bad for like, oh no, that ghost is stuck here, but they don't really have time. So it might be two seconds, right? Well, well, yeah. And their experience may be different because I went ghost hunting in, um, you know, Cultivero, California at the Jeffrey hotel. Um, I ran across some uh, younger kid ghosts and teenager ghosts, um, 
there and a lot of them and I actually physically saw some of them um, you know, hiding in corners and giggling because they're like, you know, they love doing that. They wanted to have the experience <laughs> of being like a teenager and scaring the bejeevers out of you. And everybody else was saying, oh, they're demons and this and that. And my, my take of my reading on it was like totally different. And a lot of times, um, you know, when I was with paranormal groups, it's like I just never really fit in because my reality is a little bit different than what they're used to, to doing. And sometimes I can interject and and sometimes I would also help with a the solution. They were saying, like, you know, this is a really dangerous place. And we're worried about attachments and that coming home and blah, blah, blah. And I says, well, you know, here's a really good technique. If you want to have protection, it's really simple. All you have to do is request that the ghost higher self in the future as an ascended master who already has all the knowledge and information come and aid and assist and protect you. Not the ghost you're hunt you're uh, hunting. If we'll use that word, not the ghost you're investigating, but yourself. You're saying, can yourself uh, higher self in the you future? Can ask, you can ask the ghost higher self as an ascended master in the future to come and ask for protection, because then if they manifest or they protect, they're still going to be dealing with their past self. It can still create a healing and information between that person's past self and their oh. future self that already has all the answers. It can become a win-win situation that it may aid and assist with information that they have been seeking and looking for and then dissipate the amount of drama, trauma, and chaos that uh, was going to be created in our reality and their reality in that one moment. Oh, I love that. And, you know, there is that thing in the paranormal. There's a lot of, um, which is funny. I, the paranormal is mostly women, but there's a lot of bro guys that are like so tough that they're going to go find, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that is kind of funny where they want to find something dark. So they do. Um, and they will. And that's yes. okay too. Cause that's probably maybe their experience and maybe they, maybe have, they have fun with it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. Whatever. Oh, Yes. Hold on, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Ashley, and Prithvika is my collection of consciously created crystal and nature forged jewelry. Prithvika translates to of the earth in Hindi, which represents the natural earth made materials I'm working with, along with my personal ancestry and grounded energy. Each piece is created through ceremony and science and completed with being Reiki charged. I'm currently featuring copper mirror necklaces, which can be used for protection and mirror magic. My intention is for your new piece of jewelry to feel like an extension of self, to help bring your desires to fruition and to amplify the magic within you. My Instagram is at Prithvika and my website is Prithvika.com. That's P-R-T-H-V-E-E-K-A. Dot com. So um, now we were talking earlier about um, some of your artwork and some of the stuff that you do. And I so I am guessing that you personally are not worried about 5G because you're at a fr higher frequency. Uh, I know that there's I, I'm not crazy about 5G. I'm not a fan of it at all. In fact, there was so much 5G in Los Angeles that when I moved out to sort of where I am now, my hair started to grow back. Like something happened there. Um, are you, um, what are your feelings on 5G? And tell us about the little organite things we, that you make. Well, um, I, my guides, I'm, I'm an artist, but um, I'm also do spiritual readings on the phone for people with astrology and numerology. And then recently I've been guided to do um more organ because of the 5g networks which have electromagnetic frequency that can affect our body because we're electromagnetic beings and stuff and so i've been making a wonderful little what, what they call star busters it's like uh, the flower of life symbol and there's a lot of um, star seeds out there that are awakening to themselves and these little organ organ energy which is usually resin and wood and then it has um, stainless steel and crystals and minerals in them. Uh, and my guides tell me what to mix. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of people out there actually using organ art um, and busters and little yeah. discs to aid and assist to ward off those negative EMFs that are in our, our, our 
environment with TVs and modems and routers and uh, radio stations and the 5G cell towers. And so I've been making those and um, they're wonderful little two by two inches. I actually put even some gold leafing on the bottom with some of the minerals to really create things. So they tell me, so I know there's a lot of people out there making them, but I think what's different about mine is the fact that I, I really do make them with love. I, I played love frequency, you know, in my basement with, you know, for that. I have great intentions with it. And I get so excited like a kid. Each one I make, they're like little presents when I wake up in the morning to take them out of mold. You know, I like to run downstairs and see what what I got created. And and they actually do have a vibration to them and they do have little personalities. And and I just love selling them and they help so many people. Um, they carry it in their pocket. I have somebody that bought some that are, is a radiologist and they use it around the x-ray machines and stuff. And so, uh, now it's, that, it's, yeah, it's funny cause I have little, um, organite dragons around my house that my friend Monique from a uh, home record podcast made. Um, you can't quite fit those in your pocket, but they're here guarding my house. <laughs> um, but I love these with, uh, um, when you say they have little personalities, I kind of, I love that. Like they're just here to help. Yes, they are here to help. I have some that are um, crop circle connectors. I have a special design I made out of wood that helps you connect to your starseed family, connections to your guides and angels. Um, I have one of a money buster to help you bring in more of that abundance because it's made with um, actually gold leafing and uh, special minerals for that and to make you have a little bit self-confidence. The star of David and also Metatron's cube is a great protector disc. Um, Because sacred geometry is everything. The flower of life is everything in universe. You know, it 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 is a frozen Mandela. Sacred geometry is a musical note. You know, with music frozen in time, and it's actually they've actually discovered that the flower of life is in our DNA. And so it's just it could really organ can actually heal through the amount of frequency that has body, mind, and spirit. And so. if you want to just uh, Google it, uh, Oregon, O-R-G-O-N-E, you can read about it. William um, Wright was a German who was a German researcher that came up with that. And he found that when he made a wooden box with stainless steel in it and resin and crystals, um, people that actually had some illnesses um, got cured. Now, <laughs> isn't there a story about that, that he, there was somebody that made an organite like box and people would sit in it for like 20 minutes and their cancer would go away. And then the government yep. arrested him and de- destroyed yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, um, even years ago in 1992, I was really compelled to use, um, to make organ stuff. And, um, and my guide said, no, it's not time because, they really suppressed a lot in the internet, even that word organ, um, mm. you know, and so now it's getting, now it's getting a little better. So that's why I've been kind of coming out with it. Now it's time. And even way back in 1992, I was talking to ghosts and things on the other side. Um, I saw a telephone booth to the other side be made where you can talk to loved ones. And, um, and that's when ghost box started becoming really kind of popular. A few years ago, I started, I did my first uh, ghost box way back in 2007. Um, wow. And they're just getting better yeah. and better. I worked with a guy that oh. made it so, uh, that di- a little like the radio stations. It made the radio stations go backwards for some reason so that any other spirit stuff coming in was very clear. And then he put his guitar reverb on it. We were using it for scary stuff. But <laughs> but oh yeah, that sounds like um, um, Mr. Huff, um, paranormal uh, Huff, oh. uh, Steve Huff, uh, and then also um, Hope paranormal does the same um uh steve huff is a photographer and also he uh does the boxes for many years i think since 2008 we were around the same time um and i was always talking to a lot of uh paranormal uh, radio shows at that time i says well you know in, in, in ghost boxing you really it's it's not just about the box it's it's about the operator because mm-hmm. <laughs> You, you have to have the consciousness and the positivity and the knowingness and also that heartfelt connection because if you don't, and they always said that, you know, frequency plus heartfelt connection equals contact to the other side. That's one thing that my guide said is the secret to those, those ghost box. And so Huff, uh, paranormal, Steve Huff's, um, came with the key thing about the reverb 
And um, also he would do the reverse speech. So people can't say off the radio, they're just picking random words. If right. you have a reverse speech radio or uh, recording, they can't. If something comes out forward, then you know that it is actually spirit talking to you. And with the delay pedal, he used a delay. He uses reverb pedal and also um, a, no, a noise gate, which also decreases the amount of shh on it. Um, he found that with the delay, it gives spirits that extra three to five second delay to talk. Uh, and if anybody, um, th- it, this is exactly the box we used on last year, 2021. Uh, this is what Ryan and I were using at the Middleton school in the Halloween episode for 2021. So if you want to go back and hear what that sounds like, it's amazing. Um, and, uh, does he sell them? Um, he shows on his channel, um, how to make your own. Okay. And in fact, I would just say simply, if somebody got an SB7, um, Chris Fleming and Gary Golka is the one that, that, uh, made the SB7 originally a few years ago. In fact, I talked to Chris Fleming, Fleming on the phone, um, a few years ago and was telling about my ideas about ghost boxes. And he says, oh my, oh my goodness, gal, we're, we're doing that right now. So how would you know that? (laughs) And so Chris Fleming gave me actually his first SB7. And that's what I use to this day. Um, So it was like, and then he read for me and said, girl, you will never be accepted in the paranormal community because your ideas are just so off the wall about things. Well, (laughs) you know what? Don't feel bad about that. I feel like the paranormal community has a lot of um, bumps. You know what I mean? Yes, it, it does. But you know, You know, with that 5D and, you know, 4D energy, you know, I think we're going to see a shift. So I'm kind of excited about that. And so I I would tell somebody, yeah, I would tell somebody if they want to start their own ghost box, get an SB7. And then on the ghost store, you can get a um, ACN mini. And that is like a noise gate that decreases the amount of shh. And then I've asked them to get also um, a little speaker that they use on the ghost adventures, that little round speaker, yep. you hook the three things up, you got something very reasonably priced and you're going to get contact. Um, it's, you don't have the delay on it as much, but it's a good start and it's cost effective. And I really, really recommend that. And on Steve Huff's site, he has a app, a miracle box app. Yes. Uh, if you really want to get for the, on the cheap, the miracle ba- box app is fantastic. I use that. Um, Also, um, I like the Portal app also. I don't know if they still make the Portal app, but I have that on my phone. And that is also amazing results I've gotten off of that, too. Well, you know, I think, uh, and and the other one, there was one I was using, uh, I think the subscription just ran out, but it was the one that shows the stick people. That is quite interesting. It's, It's so amazing that it's all on the phone. But also, I think that one, there was one a long time ago, and it was a hoax or it wasn't real, but it worked because if the spirits want to come through, they're going to use whatever you got. Yeah. They're going to use that, that the electronics is a really good way because it, it, you know, a computer has crystals in it. Um, radios have crystals. Um, there's a certain frequency level, um, with things and we're all color, light, vibration, and sound was the first thing that Ishmet told me when I was on that crystal healing table in 1992, everything in the universe is color, light, vibration, and sound. And so that's how we can have contact to the other side, frequency plus the heartfelt connection. That heartfelt connection is so important because our heart is a crystal oscillator. If you think about it, we have our blood that has iron in it, which is a crystal, and it goes through our heart. And we have the SA node that that gives an electrical spark and current that goes through the four chambers. And it's like an echo chamber. And so you got a little ghost box in your chest. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Well, you know, I am still fascinated. Nobody but me likes this anymore. And I can't seem to find the right camera again. Maybe I should send it out to the universe. But I just like still photography, which is way harder to capture things on. But I like it. And I always tell people, you have to ask permission if they will appear in the pictures and that usually helps. Yes. And I love photographs too. It's just wonderful, the energy and stuff. And 
In fact, since we're talking about the ghosts in my experience that I had way back in 1992, when I moved here to Springfield, Illinois, three years ago, because my um, partner's um, family lives here, and me being from California and coming to the Midwest was a big old shock. But, um, you know, I... I, my ability is just mostly was clear audience. Like I heard my guides and angels. I never really saw that much, you know? Um, mm. And uh, when I first came here and I moved into our house, which is a 1931 um, craftsman house. And I was out in our front porch having coffee the first morning in our house. Um, our neighbor next door came out and there was this, this uh, teenage boy wearing overalls barefooted and he leaned over the railings and waved at me. And I said, oh, good morning. I started waving at him and talking to him. And the next thing I know, he disappeared. <laughs> they were ready to see you. <laughs> but the thing is, he was full bodied. I mean, it was like physical 3D, like anybody else I saw in California. And that freaked me out because I never really had that ability until I came here to Springfield, Illinois. And I think it had something to do with the ley lines and things. Um, but then we would go for a walk in the neighborhood and I would tell Barbara, I'd say, you know, I want to cross the street because I don't like that person on the porch. He's like burying a hose, hole through me. I don't like his energy. And he's sitting in the rocking chair. And my girlfriend would go, honey, there's nobody sitting in that rocking chair. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, before we send everybody to your red website to get their organite and their readings, um, uh, first, uh, for people, because I feel like, and it's a little stronger now. I, I, this is not anything wrong with Los Angeles because believe me, I'm going back as soon as I can, but there is a lot of what we could say, uh, noise, uh, whether it's 5g or radiation or just a lot of people, there's a lot of noise there. Um, and now I seem to have a really, it's, um, a really good, connection to my guides, at least early in the morning when I get up and I'm writing and for people to, and I don't necessarily mean be clear audience as much as I mean, um, hearing that like everybody has a hearing or a knowing. And those are the two I, I think we can develop to know. Yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions or exercises for people to get that stronger? Because I know there's, first of all, there's believe it. You got to believe it. Got to be in there. Um, but a lot of people and just hold, hit a certain point and can't break that wall. Do you have any advice or exercises for them? Well, yes. I always say that my, my saying, solo saying is, you know, you got to see it, you got to feel it, you got to be it. So it goes along those lines. I always tell people the first start in dream time to have introduction to your guides and angels. It's the easiest way without really having to meditate and do all that stuff. Because I'm kind of a, a lazy psychic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you so, so before so, you go to sleep, program your dreams. Yes, I always just say, hey, guides and angels, can you show up? Can you tell me what your name is, what you look like? Talk to me, give me symbols because. You know, when you start with dream time, everything in the universe is color, light, vibration, and sound, but everything is an archetype of energy and symbols, like in astrology and numerology and also animals. So I tell people, get a book called Animal Speaks by Ted Andrews. Um, they're going to tell you what, what the symbology of the animals mean. Um, you can also analyze your dreams through on the internet by putting in with the dream things, what the symbolism is. If you know archetypes, if you know the symbols, you can interpret your dreams. And that's just an easy freaking way to get contact with your guides and angels. Pretty soon you'll start getting that little inner voice going or those feelings in your body. Pay attention if you're getting goosebumps that your guides and angels touching you or saying, yeah, that was right on, you know, go with it, you know, and everybody knows about the different things. Most, most primitive emotion psychically is going to be empathic. You're going to feel it in your body. So you got to go with that. Then you can hear that little tiny voice, which is like same voice when you're reading a book and you're reading that sentence, even though someone else wrote it, it's still in your little inner voice, right? Wow. Well, that's kind of like spiritually reading. If you don't have to have a physical different voice, it's going to be that little inner reading voice that you'll hear that says you go up to the stop sign and it says don't go and then somebody runs it and you could have been smashed. That is your guides and angels talking to you even though it sounds like in your voice. So you got to see it, you got to feel it, you got to be it. You got to believe in the universe and believe the word believe means to be and just to live and don't live the lie because all those words in the are in the word believe. You know, I might, um, this might be wrong, but I have always had a deal, 
with my main guide that he looks like the emperor card. I was like, I like that. And some psychic said, oh, he likes that. So is that, that's probably okay to do, right? <laughs> yes, that's okay. Sometimes they won't say anything because um, sometimes you'll get a name about something or you can get a symbolism about something because maybe your guys and angels is a group consciousness because uh. when it comes down to it, um, in the universe, it's humans that always have to have an identifier of a name. But when you get out in the, in the cosmos and the different planets, it's more of a symbol, like light language, because symbols speak to the soul without words. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. It's just knowingness. Okay. You're so brilliant. I'm so glad I had this whim. It was my guides. They were like, call Sallow, because I have had this year more so than any other before, the first thing that uh, my guides were saying is art is now mandatory. Everyone should be yeah. scribbling, coloring, building, creating. And they, they were like, it's not a, it's not a, what do they say in college? It's not an elective course anymore. And sometimes when I get up instead of my morning papers, I'll hear in my mind draw. And sometimes it's like a mountain or it's not, I'm not a, a, a you know, I'm kind of simple. I'm not a great artist. I don't want to say that too loud because who isn't a great artist? We all are. Um, but it'll be something simple or something I could do. And I feel like they're in integrating information through the drawing more than anything else. Yes, because our psychic centers relate more to the right side of our brain, which is our intuition and symbology and not the written word. And the left side of our brain is uh, speech and mathematics. And so when you start exercising the right side of your brain, that's another way of getting contact your guides and angels and going to a higher vibrational level. Um, the same was Tyler Henry. Um, he um, scribbles because that activates the right side of his brain and it starts to go into his, you know, uh, delta and theta state of his brain. And that's just my theory. Um, studying this stuff for years and stuff. So it opens it up. So that anybody that wants to doodle, Zen doodle is a great, great introductory of doing patterns. And that will open you up to your guides and angels or just doodling on a pad or sketching will is the way of the future for awakening star seeds. Um, sound therapy will awaken you star seeds to connections with that meditation, of course, breathing, just breathing a couple seconds each day of being aware of your breath, even though it sounds like you hear it all the time and all the spiritual gurus say that and you're like, what the heck is that about? But when I got one of those watches that do your heartbeats and stuff and I started doing the breath, I started noticing a difference. And so, yes, just taking breathe and be with God is what my guides say sometimes to me. And they said that over the radio when I said any messages for me, and they said, Solo, breathe, be with God. <laughs> uh, well, I love also that you said, I'm sorry, everyone, if I just screamed in the microphone, I got all excited. Um, the scribbling, I tell people to do that before, uh, I guess, same reason, but different thought process is that is a, uh, I tell people to do that before to um, tell the conscious mind, we're not working in patterns anymore. So the subconscious can take over. And I believe I learned that from a remote viewing video, but it's so great how all the same information is leading us to the same place, all the different information leading us to the same place. Yes, and it's so important. And that's why through my walking experience, I want to inspire and I want to be a service to others the best I can through my spiritual readings to help people find out what their spiritual purpose is in the universe. We we talk about their astrology, um, what their spiritual purpose is, what their numerology is, what they came to work on in this lifetime, what they came to leave behind, and some things that may be tripping them up. I'm here to be a coach. I'm not here to tell them how to do stuff, but I'm here to inspire them and give them, provide them information the best I can for that, and also help some of those confused star seeds or other walk-ins or Anybody that's spiritually awakening might get all freaked out. Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> Weird question. Do you do readings for teenagers or kids? What would be the age that would you, maybe you don't have or it's case to case, but I'm wondering, I have a lot of um, uh, parents that I read for that know their kids are special. Um, yeah, I've had that question. What I usually do if it's somebody, sometimes I've been asked to do a reading for someone that just got born. And I'll read for them and then they'll play the recording years later. Oh. Um, and they find that helpful. If if the mother's on board about it and 
also the teenager is on board about it, then then I, then it's a go. But you have to take each reading and each request um, personally. Like, how does it feel? Does it feel like you're supposed to read for them or not? Because a lot of times you might get people that get so excited about reading, they want their friend to experience the same thing, but the friend may not be on the same page about it. That and is, they, they, yes, gift certificates and sometimes can go that way. Yes. That's, yeah, and that's not, that's no fun. <laughs> it's like, yes, it, that, then it's just hard, hard work. But, but yeah, I think if it feels right and appropriate and like, yeah, I'm supposed to do it. It's just like when you asked me yesterday about um, doing the podcast, it's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, okay, you, you just know. And other times, there's, sometimes it's it's not. But um, it, it's, it's just such an exciting time that so many people can be waking. And the more people that realize their true potential, um, that we are all loved, that we are all not alone. And yet it is a difficult time and it can feel so lonely and so stressful and so anxiety ridden and so depressed that, you know, you're not alone. You know, we're here to help one another. We're here to usher in this new vibration coming in and it's all going to be okay. The good along with the bad, you know, it's, it's all there to be the totality of who you are. My guides have always said that first day on the on my table that I, I got here and arrived. They said, Salo, the isness of one's beingness is in one's own totality. And I said, what the heck does that mean? You know? <laughs> it's like wow. the isness of one's beingness is in one's own totality, which means in order for us to be kind of whole, we have to experience both the dark and the light and integrate it. It's not about going to a spiritual retreat and say, I need to get rid of this darkness in me. No, it's about integrating it. And life's not about total positivity and eliminating the negative people in your life. No, it's about being the strong light you are, being it in good times and bad times and around negative people and around positive people. It's about having that balance in the center. Well, you are. I am glad your guides gave the okay to paranormal Karen because you're always welcome here, my friend. Um, tell <laughs> everyone where to find you. You can find me on the internet for my spiritual readings. I have a website called Salo Stanley Psychic dot com. That's S A L O S T A N L E Y Psychic P S Y C H I C. I think that dot com. I, I hesitate on that sometimes too. I I, I know because <laughs> I'm so dyslexic, you know. Um, right, and, and you're then, like, is there a Y? Where's the Y and the C? Is I, there a- <laughs> I know it reverses and stuff. It's it's almost like when you go to a restaurant, it says open, but really it says nope. <laughs> NLP, you know, yes, like oh, yes. that's so paradoxical here on planet Earth. But yes. uh, and my other one is my my Etsy store, which is called Solo Galactic Light Art. Just Google Solo Galactic Light Art, and you can find my organ art there. Or I'll make something special for you. I'll tune in. I'll channel it for you. That's what makes it different. I listen to my guides and angels and your guides and angels to do whatever needs to be done. And then if you want to write me an email on something too, you can find me at solo Stanley at gmail.com. All right. I'm writing all this down. It'll be in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on. What a great uplifting way to start December. Oh, thank you so much. You're like one of my favorite people. I love seeing your posts on Facebook and (laughs) everything. I so appreciate you for all the work that you're doing in the universe. Well, ditto, my friend. And thank you for bringing your light to us here. Your star beam, right? Yes. Whatever you want to call me, but just don't call me late for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll make you cake or pudding. All right. That's right. (laughs) Thank you, Salo. And thank you to Mike at Una Rising Media. And we will see you all uh, next week. Paranormal Karen. She's a spooky kind of queen. Paranormal Karen.